Hello and welcome to my channel. Today we're going to be talking about homeschooling in the state of Utah. And we're going to start with the HSLDA website where you can go if you have any legal questions or legal concerns and you can join them I believe for about $10 or $12 a month. I can't help you with legal questions but I can go to their website to see what it says and you can print it off and put the date on it and put it in your portfolio if you like or your binder. And right now it says that you have to file an affidavit for each of your children when you start homeschooling and it has to be signed and notarized. It must contain a statement that your child will be attending a homeschool and that you assume the sole responsibility for the education of the student except for the portion of the time the child is dual enrolled in public school. You can find an affidavit form for the use of HSLDA members below. You could probably find one as well at the Board of Education site. Um, after they review your affidavit, it says they will, you'll receive an excuse certificate acknowledging your homeschool program within 30 days and a new certificate each year by August 1st. You do not need to refile the affidavit as long as you remain in the school district. And you're going to want to keep a copy of that, proof of that, in your portfolio or your binder if you're keeping one. It says there are no required days of instruction, no required subjects for homeschoolers in Utah. The parent is solely responsible for the selection of instructional materials and textbooks. And this is, um, you can go to the Utah website. You can see it in the upper left hand corner. And this is their frequently asked questions and you can print that out. And you can put that in your portfolio or binder as well. So. And that way you can see what it says. And I would put the date on it that you printed it out so that you have it. And hopefully they've updated it. So there is that. And at the beginning of the year, you're probably going to want to give your student an assessment test to see what level they're on, what they've absorbed from what they learned the past year, if they need to review anything, and to create a plan of what you're going to teach them. And this website has some of those, and you can find those in various websites on the internet. I just happen to like these. So you can give them, you can print this out or save it for a PDF. And so you can see what they know and what they, if they struggle with anything if they need to review anything or what level they're on. And this is one of the math books. And with math, it's easy to tell, you know, if they make a simple mistake, you can go over it or if they need to review something or you can tell what level they're on so that you can create your plan for what you want to teach them for the year. And this right here is to help you if you've never homeschooled. Maybe you're trying to brainstorm and create a list of the things that you might need for the year for homeschooling them. Maybe you're trying to brainstorm and come up with favorite websites or workbooks or books you might want to use, field trips, things like this. This will help you to look at so that you can come up with a list and create your favorite websites or whatever and put it in your portfolio or your binder and then you can create a separate list when you decide on what you're actually going to use and then you can look back on your favorites so that maybe halfway through the year or next year you want to use different ones so hopefully that'll help you and then you can look at that to help you to create a schedule so maybe you have decided you want to use IXL as the complete curriculum and you want to do it for three hours a day four days a week and then maybe have a workbook that you want to use for an hour a day that's complete curriculum maybe you want to have your field trips maybe one day of the week like Friday afternoon you want to let them read their magazine subscriptions on the subjects that they're studying 
or maybe you want to play educational board games like Scattergories, Scrabble, Yahtzee, things like that. So then that helps you look at that to be able to decide how you want to create your schedule that you can also put in your portfolio or your binder. And this is an attendance record that I found and you can see where I found it. It's on the North Carolina's website and you can Google search for that or type in that website address that you see in the upper left hand corner. And you might want to put a plan of the days that you plan to have school and you plan to have field trips and holidays and things come up even public school ends up having snow days so then you can put the days you actually have school and field trips and holidays and then you can have both of them in your portfolio or your binder and this is the Excel website and you can see that you could easily print out the curriculum and throw that in your portfolio or your binder for the year if you're using this website and if you're creating a daily log where you type in or you write down in a notebook um, day one the date the time, the subject, the name of the book or the website, and then you put what they're doing, the activity, you can easily see what the activity is, like skip counting by two, skip counting by five, skip counting by tens. So that'll help you understand if you've seen on different websites that you should keep a daily log and you should list the activities they're doing, those are the activities and it helps if you put day one when you're doing it day two day three because then you don't have to add count up the days you can see them and you can see they're all there so I would put the day number day one day two the date the time you start each subject and that at the last subject of the day you time the time you start and end so you have the full school day on there the name of the subject after each time the name of the website or the workbook and the activity that they're doing so and I believe uh, I sell costs about $20 a month and it's a full curriculum um, going from pre-k all the way up to I believe high school or college classes and this is Khan Academy and it says it's free for everyone everywhere and it goes from pre-k up to college classes and it has life skills so some people might decide they want to use the math from my Excel and the life skills from Khan Academy and then maybe the reading from Easy Peasy. It's just up to you how you want to do it and how your students enjoy it the most. And this is all in one home school. And it is also free at this time, but it takes you to a PayPal to try to get you to donate and you can click cancel and then use it for free. It also has Bible classes. So if you want to begin your day with Bible study and prayer, then you can do that and I believe it's separate from their daily activities but you can see it on here and their daily activities take you to what different websites maybe one website for doing math and one for reading and another for history so it makes it fun and this is just to show you Schoolhouse Rock I don't know if you've ever heard of it and if you have heard of it maybe you didn't know it covers grammar science economics history and civics so it covers a lot of different subjects and they sing along and they enjoy it and they memorize the songs and a lot of times they remember it from the time they're young till the time they're adults so this really helps a lot and it shows the multiplication tables and if you go to YouTube you can find that people have created playlists that have schoolhouse rock so you can listen to it for free and this is grammar rock so you can see it teaches them the noun the verbs and the different parts of speech and then you have America Rock that teaches them about branches of the government, declaration of independence, immigration, and a variety of things. And then you have Science Rock listed under both Science Rock and Earth Rock. And you can see the different things that they learn when they listen to those songs. And this is Money Rock. And it teaches them about budgeting and finances. And there's the Earth Rock one, so it's great fun for them. And if you need a break to go make their lunch, take a phone call, maybe they are working in a workbook and they're tired of it and they need a break, it's just great fun for them. And then they learn and while they're having so much fun, and that's important. This is International Children's Digital Library, and it has about four or 5,000 books. And if it has different editions that they came out with, they're probably on here. And you can see how easy it is to click the title of the book and that you're going to read the book. And then you can see 
the pages, which you can turn to the right or the left in the upper right hand corner. And then you can scroll down or you can zoom out if you like. So it's just a fun website. And if you do decide you want to go to the library, you might create a list of library skills that you would like them to learn. And then you can give them a certificate of achievement and put that in their portfolio or binder. And this is Mr. Nussbaum. And you're homeschooling, so you get to choose the classes that you want them to take. And of course, you want to teach them probably 60% of the time, you know, their main subjects that they need to work on that focus on their standardized testing that they usually focus on. But then you have the rest of the time where you can l allow them the freedom to pick what they want to learn about. So you can go to Mr. Nussbaum, for an example, and ask them, hey, what do you want to learn about today? So this makes their learning more fun and more enjoyable. And you can let them choose. Do you want to write a paper about it? Do you want to draw a picture? Do you want to do an art project? You know, what do you want to do? And then they have such a variety for them that you could go over. And then there's food. If they want to learn about pizza and then you make a homemade pizza, you can do that. If they want to learn about soup and then you make soup, you can do that. If they want to learn about donuts, you can take canned biscuits and use those and poke a hole in them or twist them up and fry them up and have them mix just a little tiny bit of milk or water and powdered sugar because it, it gets runny way too easily and then you can use that to put the frosting on the donuts and then you can have donuts after studying about donuts so there's ice cream if you want to study about ice cream and then make a sundae so it's just fun and it makes their learning that much more fun that way they get options to choose from and they get to create how they're going to learn and when you're at home and you're one-on-one -on -one with your students, you have so much more freedom. If they want to learn about study birds or butterflies and then go outside and look for butterflies and birds, you can do that. That's just, you can study about video games and just whatever, cats. It's just fun for them to learn. I think that if it, you make it more fun for them to learn, then they're going to want to learn more so that's just some great ideas i just love his website and this is ck12.org and you can go there and they have a variety of subjects you can study they have photography they have chemistry physics life science earth science and you can see they have different grade science it's so user friendly so you can go there and study different subjects as well. And that would be great fun. Maybe Wednesday afternoons, you want to give them um, life skills or 4-H type classes and let them choose what they want to learn. So maybe they decide they want to learn cooking. Wednesday afternoons for a month or photography. Wednesday afternoons for another month, candle making. It's up to you. You can choose the different subjects or give them options. Maybe they want to take those online classes from Michael's or they want to learn to play tennis or go bowling or swimming or play horseshoes or making jelly, leather crafts, tie dyeing. Just learn about farming and go to different farms and study what they, the different kinds of farms they have. That's up to you because you're homeschooling and you get to choose how you want to do your school. And there's so many options that maybe you hadn't even thought of. Um, homeschool support groups. You might can join a homeschool support groups and they have knowledge. They probably have experience. Um, you could ask them questions when you have questions or you can go to the HSLDA website and join. And if it's legal questions, you can ask them questions. The homeschool support groups, if you have books that you want to donate to other families, that's probably a good place to find other families to donate your school books for to when you're done with them. So 
It's just some excellent ideas. And if you're creating a portfolio or a binder for a keepsake, you can create one for you and one for your student or just the one. And you can put your placement test from the beginning of the year, your state homeschool laws that you printed out for the date on, copies of any forms you filed, your calendars or attendance records. When you brainstormed your favorite resources, you can put that in there. The actual list of resources you're going to use. List of field trips you might take. Um, when you print out the contents from web pages like IXL or workbooks to show the curriculum or list of activities you're going to do. Sample student work. You might want to put two pages a week uh, from every subject and maybe you want to showcase their best work or maybe you want to show progressive work or maybe you want to do a variety of skills and if your student has one and you have one, maybe you want to show a variety of skills and they want to showcase their best work. If you take field trips, maybe you want to put proof in there, like a leaflet or a flyer for a keepsake, put the date on there. Maybe have the student write a paper about what was something they enjoyed the most or draw a picture. Uh, if you create a weekly schedule, you probably want to put that in your portfolio or your binder. Your daily log of activities where you put day one, the date, the time, the name of the subject, the name of the website or the workbook and the activities they did. And you might want to put that in your portfolio or your binder. You can put type that into a WordPad document, email it to yourself, and print it out every now and then and throw it in your portfolio or your binder. If you have them do self-evaluations to let you know um, what they feel that they're doing the best at, what they're struggling the most at, if they need a little bit more time on one of the subjects than the other one, you might want to put that in there. And if you do assessments every six to eight weeks on every subject and at the year end, you might want to have them help you with that and then make sure you put a positive spin on it. So if they're struggling with their reading or they're behind on their reading and then within the year they go up five levels. So you could put their struggling with their reading at the year end. You could put that they went five levels and you think it was because of their positive attitude and their hard work. So you can put that in there. If they take any standardized tests yearly, you might want to put that in there. If they do volunteer work, maybe you could create certificates for people to fill out when they do the volunteer work or some kind of paperwork and that put that in there, especially if they're going to college or a military school. I mean college or, mil or joining the military. And if they take outside classes like swimming lessons or yoga or Zumba or art classes, pottery, anything. You might want to have somebody fill out paperwork showing they take those outside classes and put that in your portfolio or your binder. And if you have contacts with email addresses, phone numbers for the school or for your home school support groups, <laughs> I'm tongue tied anyway. Anyway, you might want to put your contact information that has to do with homeschooling in your portfolio or your binder. If you Take them on career study field trips, maybe to see if you can tour a hospital or a local hotel. And maybe you have them create questions asking people about their education or the skills they do or whatever their daily tasks involve. Maybe you want to um, have them write a paper and put that in their portfolio or binder. Maybe you could see if you could do audio or video footage and put that on a disc and put that in the portfolio or the binder as well. And that's just some ideas for great fun and maybe to hopefully help you have a ideas for your home school. So, cause hopefully it helps somebody. I try to include everything in there, but it's so hard cause there's so much information and it's fun to be able to homeschool. It's, it's great because you don't have all that pressure. Maybe, you know, when you're in a classroom full of other students and the teacher's asking you questions and you might be afraid to raise your hand because you don't know how your peers are going to react. And I, I just think that homeschooling just seems like it's just a way that they can be creative and enjoy it. So hopefully this has helped you and I appreciate you watching my channel. I don't have a lot of subscribers. I'm a small channel, so I appreciate my viewers. And please feel free to leave comments. And I really hope this helps you and have a great day. Bye-bye.